Written by Kyle McClear. Spork was neither spoon nor fork, but a bit of both. He had a mum and a dad who thought he was perfect just the way he was. But Spork stuck out. In his kitchen, forks were forks and spoons were spoons. Cutlery customs were followed closely. Mixing was uncommon, naturally. But there were rule breaker, breakers, knives who loved chopsticks, tongs who made forks. But such families were unusual. One day after the billionth time he was asked, What are you anyway? And the zillionth time he was passed over when the table was being set. For Spork sighed and thought it must be easy to be one thing. And decided he'd try to pick just one thing to, do, to be. He thought he should start by fixing his head. He put on a bowler hat to look more spoonish, but the forks that he was too round. Then he made a paper crown to look more forkish, but the spoon thought he was too pointy. Spork wondered if there were other lonely creatures out there with no matching kind, who never got chosen at the table. At dinner time, he watched from the drawer while the spoons played pea hockey and skillfully balanced boiled eggs. He sat off to the side while the forks racked, raked fancy patterns in the mashed potatoes and twirled noodles round in complicated circles like rhythmi rhythmic gymnasts. And at the end of this and every other meal, Spork looked on while the others enjoyed a super bubbly bath at the sink. Until one morning, a messy thing arrived. The messy thing had obviously never heard of cutlery customs or table manners. No, this messy thing smeared and spilled and flunk and clumped and dripped without a care. Wait, said the forks, but the messy thing did not wait. Careful, said the spoons, but the messy thing was not careful. Help, said the forks, while the messy thing continued to slop and splatter. Quick, said the spoons. Now a fork may be good, good for poking and picking, and a spoon might be fine for scooping and stirring. But this messy thing with its slurpy and clumpy half-finished food bits needed something else, something that could do all sorts of things at once. Something flexible and easy to hold. Something that was neither spoon nor fork, but a bit of both. That's when Spork landed. The messy thing saw Spork and immediately stopped and gurgled. It grabbed Spork and held him motionless, motionless at, in its fist. It tapped him once and let out a cheerful shriek. It wagged Spork excitedly up and down. And that's how Spork finally and happily found his way to the dinner table. Just a bit round, just a bit pointy, just right. The end. Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!